Hey guys, since it is quarter two, I will be writing a new case study to put on my UX portfolio. It's been about a year or so since I updated it with my last case study, so it is definitely about time that I just add a new case study up there. I think one year is a pretty good cadence. So for this, I am fully aware that there are only two weeks left in quarter two, but I still think I can do it and I can get this case study done. I used to have a manager who would say that something only takes as long of a time as you say it's going to take. So if you say a case study is going to take two weeks, you're going to finish it in two weeks. And if you say your case study is going to take three months, then you'll finish it in three months. So we are going to start off and get this case study done. So it is finished for quarter two. Now in this video, I want to go over how I choose a topic that I write about for my case study. I'm going to show you guys how I strategize, plan, and also write it using ChatGPT. Let's get started and choose the topic. So luckily for me, I actually have a really good idea about what I want to write. I worked on a project earlier this year where we just did a lot of initial research, we talked to a lot of users, made it through a lot of iterations and different variations on how to solve this problem, and at the end we were able to come up with a lot of qualifiable and quantifiable evidence to show our impact and how we improve the workflow of our users and clients. But when I don't know what I want to write about, here's how I usually go about it. First, I'll think about the projects that I spent the longest amount of time on. Usually for like longer projects, you'll have a greater timeline, more budget, more resources, and hopefully that will allow you to spend more time in the design process. And at the end would have actually had some impact. Like you would have been able to see what kind of changes you made. And like, that's really how you make a good case study. Like you wanna see how you made impactful changes with the improvements that you designed and the problems that you were able to solve. This project that I'm talking about, I think we spent about four months on and we were able to get a lot done for it. But of course, like this only counts if you are currently working as a UX designer. If you're someone who is looking for your first UX design job and you're just trying to do your own personal projects, then I you know, you, you can't really do much about that. The next thing I like to do is do a search on job postings. And when I do this, I always look at the role that is above what I'm currently in. So like if I was a junior UX designer, I would do a job search of intermediate UX design positions. And I would try to look at those applications and see what kind of gaps am I missing currently that I can talk about and kind of like get more experience on so that I can put it on my case study. Cause like, that's the whole point of why you're writing a case study anyways. You wanna show off your work so you can move into a higher position more benefits, bigger salary, better title, all that stuff. So I always look at the job posting that is one note above what I'm currently in. And also when I'm looking at those job postings, I'm not only just looking at what they, what kind of skills that they want me to have to move into those positions, but I'm also looking at what kind of companies are hiring those positions. Because when you write a case study, ideally you want to choose something that is relatable to the jobs that you are applying for. Like, can you solve problems that they're having? Like you can write a really good case study about a bakery website redesign, but how many bakeries are actually hiring UX designers? Not a lot. And that is coming from someone who in 2018 wrote a case study about a bakery website redesign. Like it's just not relatable to the companies that are hiring UX designers and you're not really showing that you can solve the problems that you might be currently facing. And lastly, when choosing a topic, the thing I like to look at is my own case studies. I don't want to be too redundant and like choose or solve the same problem over and over again, because that's really not going to help me or not really going to show that I can diversify and like solve many different problems. Like for example, my last case study that I wrote a year ago was about redesigning or creating a design system. And that's really great and all, but like, I am not going to need another case study about that right after the one I just made. Is that really going to add so much value as solving a completely different problem with a different space in a different environment? So, you know, just try to diversify and choose different topics so you're covering all your bases. And hopefully by thinking about the project that you spent the longest on, um, the companies that are hiring UX designers, the job title you want to move into for your next steps and what kind of gaps you're missing there. And also just looking at and reflecting on what kind of case studies you already have in your portfolio, you'll be able to come up with a fresh topic that you'll be able to write about. 
So the next thing that I do is actually kind of a little weird. I wasn't gonna tell you guys this because oh, I don't know, like it's, it's kind of like odd. I don't, I don't know how many people do it because it's actually a little bit embarrassing. But I just thought, oh, you know, it's part of the process. Might as well share it with you guys if it can help out some of you. But some of you might not need it. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I actually really like to say and present just blindly like right after you've chosen a topic i like to just talk and present my case study blind so the reason i do that is because i really want to try to think about like what jumped out at me about the project that i worked on what kind of memories or struggles or like just what kind of emotions come up from like just like off the cuff when i immediately think of this project and this case study that I want to write and I know it's really silly but it really helps me because as someone who is very like someone who gets really nervous when I'm presenting like I don't want to choke when I'm in an interview so thinking about like my emotions and like what I feel really proud of or what I felt like was a struggle during this project it gives me like memory hooks so that even when I'm nervous and trying to like think about what to say, I can rely on those emotions to try to get my story out there. And how I usually like to do this is I set a timer for 15 minutes and that's about the length of time that a case study presentation would be when you're doing an interview. And I just try to naturally talk it out and really just try to fine tune eventually how I want to tell the story. I used to do a lot of martial arts. There was this one place that we demoed like many, many times and it wasn't even a big deal or a big stage. It was like a, in a restaurant. So we were like the entertainment during the meal, you know, everyone's kind of eating. So they're not even really paying attention, but I still felt like really nervous. And I think where my nerves come from is not exactly, I'm scared I can't do this. I'm scared I'm going to fail, but more like I, have this pressure and this expectation of myself to perform in a certain way and really I think that's just a really long-winded way of me saying that I'm quite hard on myself so I think that's where my nerves come from anyway but yeah timer 15 minutes and then I just try to like talk it out and I'll like speak and just start formulating my story so I learned this in my final year of university I had an option to take so I did like a creative writing English course it was actually a lot of fun I really liked it but um I learned about the five c's of storytelling and following these five c's that I'll tell you about they really help improve a story and it's really like the sequence of these five things that you can build into your case study and it'll hopefully create a really engaging story that you can use during your portfolio presentation. Like when I'm thinking about a case study, I'm really thinking about like the end goal, which is you're in an interview and you're presenting it to your hopefully potential future employers. So for me, like the storytelling bit of it is really important. The first thing you need to think about, the first C of these five Cs is a circumstance. And that is just establishing the scene. I think that's really quite straightforward. Like you want to talk about when you started this project, where you did it, like the company, the background and the context, like the why behind why you decided to run with this project or why you decided to do it. Next is curiosity, which honestly is like the most important one, I feel like curiosity is trying to get people to understand like why they should care about this case study and usually for case studies you like to talk about what kind of pain or frustrations your users are dealing with what kind of targets maybe that your business may have and how can those things be relatable to the company that you're applying for next is characters um in this case it's kind of a little weird for your case study but your character is basically you the the protagonist the, the storyteller the main character of your life and of course of your case studies and your ux portfolio i wouldn't say that it's important for you to inject your personality into writing i honestly really hate that like you need to stay professional sorry the clouds are clouding again but but like when you write your case study at least you need to show that you're professional but when you are presenting it if you want to inject humor in a situation where you feel like it would be accepted it's really just kind of like 
you know, can you understand and can you, do you know your audience? But yeah, to me, it's really like, do you sound like you care about this? Do you sound like you are proud of your work or just why anyone else should really care about what you're writing about or what you're talking about? And in the context of writing a case study, it's a lot about like your character, you and how you communicate your thoughts. So I see a lot of like very junior or like your first case study, it's very like I did A and then I did B and then I did C boom here's your case study and that's just not really what I'm looking for. I, I love to see more of like a I did A because of dot 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 which led me to B where I learned something and that helped me focus on C. So why are you doing certain things? Why are you doing them at this moment? What are you hoping to gain from them? And like letting people understand who you are and how your thought process is, is kind of part of that formulating a story. Next is conversations, which is about emotions and relatability. I've already talked about that and conflict. So when everything goes perfectly in a case study and I get that A to B to C, it's sus. <laughs> really very little circumstance that you should ever have a project go perfectly according to plan. And if you do, it's either because A, you didn't bother to collect research, two, you're biased, three, you didn't ask for any feedback, and four, all of the above. So for me, I would love to know how you overcame challenges and if there was anything that surprised you. And really, when you are inserting conflict into your case study, the question you should really be answering is how did this make you grow as a UX designer. Okay, I don't think the sun's coming back this time. Um, so with this new camera angle, we are ready to write our case study and I have my computer just all set up and ready to go. When I write my case study, I always like to do it in Google Docs, it's just like where I feel the most comfortable doing it and also just organizing all of my files and different stuff like that. And recently on the other side of my screen when I'm writing, I like to have ChatGPT open. I have been using ChatGPT a lot at work. It feels like a rubber ducky. I can kind of just like have someone to bounce ideas off of. It gives me a lot of help when it comes to thinking up copy and different like iterations on how to write copy. Helps me write emails. Honestly, I really love it. I highly recommend you to give it a shot if you haven't. So first thing I like to do is actually write out all my headings in the order that I want them to appear on my case study. So this is just going to help me tell my story. So I used the little notebook that I had when I was doing my um, like kind of just like blind speaking out loud exercise and I just started writing down the headings. Usually it's very like standard. I do have a way that I like to go about it and then after that I like to add in bullet points on what I would like to cover in each section. So just using something like role for example like my role on the project. I'll I'll talk about my actual title, how long I spent on the project, who else I worked with, and what I was responsible for. And I also like to make notes on where I want to insert my images along like as I'm doing these headers and like coming out with these bullet points because I really want to focus on creating a case study that is easily scannable. When I think of what someone sees on the screen, I want to make sure that at every section they're scrolling, no matter what, they always see like a hint of a picture, the picture itself, or just anything like that so it feels like it's more scannable for them to go through. There's images to kind of break up that text and it just doesn't get too boring or hopefully too long and I just keep my paragraphs like quite short. And then with each section I like to enter my prompt into ChatGPT so I will write like write me a section in a UX portfolio to cover the following and then here I will like copy and paste my bullet points into there and I'll just hit generate. So I'll see what kind of response ChatGPT comes out with and I usually like to hit generate like a couple times just so I can get a few different variations. I kind of just like pick and choose which one I want so it can help me get pretty close to the tone and also like the the wording that I prefer and that feels like me. I know it's not going to be like perfect. I, I never expect it to be perfect but it does help me like get ideas on how this can this can look. And sometimes I also like to add in more instructions like can you make the sound a bit more professional or maybe highlight this particular bullet point a bit more and, and then I'll just regenerate again and try to get different answers from ChatGPT. 
So once it generates something that I'm happy with, I say thank you to my future AI overlords and I add it into my Google Docs and I just like touch it up a little bit. So doing that, I like kind of slowly work through my case study and I'm already thinking about like how I want to tell the story and how I want to present it. Yeah, I just keep working on it like this. And then once I'm done, I like putting the entire thing into ChatGPT so that they can review it. And I'll put in prompts like edit this as a UX designer and I kind of just get like feedback like that. And with that, we have written, written, we have written, we have completed our <laughs> writing portion of our UX case study. And not only that, but you've created a personal and professional story that you can use to help build your presentation deck for when you do interviews or if you want to become a speaker, because all that work that we initially put in with speaking out loud and thinking of the emotions and the struggles and doing your bullet points and thinking about what images you're going to need in your case study, like you've pretty much got a presentation deck. So I think I'm actually gonna call it here and in an upcoming video, I'm going to show you how I create all of the visuals for my case study. I'm gonna show you how I put the visuals and the writing that we did today together and put it into my portfolio that I code by myself and just like lay it out and everything, how I upload it, how I create my presentation deck for any presentations that I might have to do with it. But yeah, I hope that this video was able to help you out when it came to writing out your case study. I do have a playlist of like case study things in case you guys are interested in seeing some of like my other videos talking about the topic. But yeah, I, I just hope this is able to help you out. Of course, you don't have to do everything that I did in this video. But yeah, I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.